everybody what's up how are you guys doing on this beautiful sun sunday hot sunday um excuse me for my tank top and stuff but i've just been outside watering my flowers because any of you guys who follow me on facebook know that i love flowers and i'm really into um planting and planting flowers now and i'm thinking about um trying to do some veggies some greens and something like that maybe but we'll see but anyway um, i was sitting here because there's nothing on television and there's really nothing to do this evening and so i said you know what while i'm sitting here bored let me just spend time with the lord what better time is there for me to just spend time with god why am i sitting here trying to figure out something to do when I can just spend time with Jesus. So that's what I did. And so I was sitting here and I was thinking about faith. And um, I was thinking about how faithful God is. And this morning I spent time with the Lord. And this morning I was thinking about um, the Holy Spirit and how awesome the Holy Spirit is and how awesome the Holy Spirit has shown me how He works in our lives how we are to co-labor with him in the earth to bring God's will to earth and how we don't understand as the body of Christ how really important the Holy Spirit is in our lives and how it is so important that we acknowledge him in our church services and in our lives individual lives when we're at home that we just get along and we get by ourselves and get before God and get into the presence of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is what we need in what we need in order for us to effectively and to be powerful and to witness to the world the salvation that Jesus has given the world and so we need the power of the Holy Spirit and I was thinking about how I'm going on a sidetrack right now y'all I'm coming back to faith but anyway this just came up I was thinking about how um, Jesus himself he was the son of God he was uh, flesh and he knew the word, and he knew the word of God, because he had taught, he had um, taught in the temple and everything. As a child, you know, he was hanging around the uh, the elders and everything, um, and so he knew the word of God. He knew the word, but he didn't start actually doing any miracles or his teaching. His ministry didn't start until he went to get baptized by John the Baptist and the Holy Spirit ascended onto on him and the Lord said this is my son who I am well pleased that was the Holy Spirit the Lord was speaking through the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God in the earth and it says in the Bible that the Holy Spirit only speaks what the Lord what comes out of the Lord's mouth what the Lord says and so that was the Lord that was the whole the Lord speaking and that was the Holy Spirit that came upon Jesus and that Holy Spirit gave Jesus the power to minister in the power that he ministered in because after he received after he was baptized and the Holy Spirit came upon him after that happened he went to do the first miracle that he would do in his ministry and that was turning the water into wine go into the Bible and read it he Jesus did nothing he did no miracles at all until after that day and after that that's when his ministry started. Even Mary did not know he was ready to start his ministry. But he knew because he knew what had happened to him when he was baptized. And so after that, he was able to walk in the, the gift of prophecy. Um, he was able to uh, heal. He was able to have, the, he had the spirit of discernment. Um, he was able to effectively uh, he was able to teach the word of God with power because the Holy Spirit had came upon him because he prophesied to the lady at the well because during his um, conversation with her he told her he read her mail he told her that she was not married she lived with a man but she wasn't married to him and that lady that opened up the door for her to believe what he was saying because she knew this was a stranger. She knew this man did not know her. This was a stranger. But he told her about her life. And he discerned spirits. He was able to discern what spirits people were uh, were possessed with. Um, and uh, 
works because so he would know how to speak to that demon or whatever and to deliver that person from it he was able to heal people's bodies uh, and make them whole he was he went forth and he taught and he taught with power because he used illustrations and parables to help people to learn uh, to understand and that's what the Holy Spirit does people he does the same thing that's why it's so important that the Holy Spirit dwells on the inside of us because the Holy Spirit gives us power he gives us power to witness to the world and through that power many are going to be bought into the kingdom of heaven into the kingdom of God many are going to receive salvation but it cannot happen and it will not happen if we do not acknowledge the power, if we do not acknowledge the presence, if we do not acknowledge the Holy Spirit. Because with the Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit comes to dwell on the inside of us, with it comes the gifts of the Spirit. With it comes the uh, gifts of the, being able to discern situations, being able to discern spirits, people's spirits, being able to discern what's going on with people. That comes with the Holy Spirit. Being able to heal, that comes with the Holy Spirit. Being able to give a word of knowledge to someone. When you go to someone and you're ministering to them and you give them a word of knowledge, which is something about their lives that you, a total stranger, should not know, but you know, that right there is a, uh, uh, it's a confirmation to them. It's evidence to them that you are speaking. God is speaking through you. And that opens their ears. It makes, them, it makes them perk up and say, wait a minute. How does this person know this about me? And that opens the door for them to start listening to you. Because you're a complete stranger. You shouldn't know this about them. How do you know this other than it came from God who knows all? And so anyway, this morning, the Lord just impressed upon me how important it is for the Holy Spirit to dwell on the inside of us. We are to tarry wait on the Holy Spirit in our church services, in our homes when we're uh, worshiping and praising at home by ourselves. We have to tarry and wait on Him. That's what the disciples did in Jerusalem. They tarried and they waited. It says that they were all on one accord and they were praying and they were all together and they were tarrying. They were waiting for the Holy Spirit. Because Jesus had told them before he ascended to heaven to be with the Father, he had told them, do not leave Jerusalem until you receive the promise. Why did he tell them that? Because before he left, he had given them a mandate. He had gave them a commission. He had gave them an order. And that was for them to go out throughout all the world and to carry the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. To tell people about Jesus, about salvation, about everlasting life. That's what that's the mandate that he gave them. That's the commission and the order that he gave them. And so in order for them, Jesus knew in order for them to effectively do this in power, they needed the Holy Spirit dwelling on the inside of them. And so as they tarried, waited on the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit came upon them and it says that they began to speak with like fire was in on their tongues. And what that just means is it means that they begin to just roll their speech. They just begin to talk fast. Fire means they were talking. They were talking fast. Fire means that when they say the fire came upon their tongues, it means that they were just they just began to utter and speak. And people who were around them began to hear them in their own tongue. You see, these people were Hebrews. They were Jewish people. And they spoke Hebrew. But the people who lived around them or the people who were there were from other parts of the region and they spoke other languages but they heard these people who were supposed to speak only Hebrew speaking in their own language that was a spiritual thing because God knows everybody's language in the earth and so that was the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit was getting their attention and once the Holy Spirit had their attention first they said that they said that um, that they were drunk but then here come Peter that saying we are not drunk because yeah they thought they were drunk because these here, here are these people they're just talking they're just speaking like crazy what are they doing what is this what is all this they must be drunk but Peter said no that they weren't drunk and Peter went on to give the first sermon of the church which was awesome and that's another thing too I think about how awesome is it this is shows you the forgiveness and the love of Christ because Peter 
had did two things that were not very Christ-like. First, he had chopped off the ear of the soldier when they were uh, arresting Jesus, number one. And the second, he denied the Son of God, Jesus, his Messiah, the one who he said was the Son of God. He denied him three times. But yet and still, Jesus, yet and still, the Holy Spirit, God gave him the honor of giving the first sermon of the church. That's awesome. And so it says that Peter went on to preach. And after he preached, many joined them, which means many were saved and many heard of the salvation, heard of who Jesus was, and many were saved. And that came from the power of the Holy Spirit. And then throughout the disciples' lives, you know, they, they needed the Holy Spirit to comfort them and to help them because they went through some things. They were murdered. Their friends were murdered. They were beaten. They were put in jail. They were jailed. They were persecuted, really persecuted the Christians were. We don't know what persecution is in America, but they, they, were really cru they were really persecuted. So they needed the Holy Spirit. Jesus knew they were going to need the Holy Spirit, number one, to spread the gospel to empower. Number two, they were going to need the Holy Spirit because they were going to need a supernatural power because he knew what they were about to go through. They were going to need something more than their power. They were going to need a power that was more powerful than the power of man. And that was the power of God. And so he knew that they were going to need the Holy Spirit to comfort them when they were jailed, when they were being beaten, when they heard their friends had been killed. He knew they were going to need the Holy Spirit to help them, to strengthen them, to give them, encourage them to keep going in spite of, in spite of what they saw, in spite of what they were feeling, but for them to keep going and keep their minds on the mission on Jesus on God and on the mission so anyway so that was that about the Holy Spirit but anyway but back to faith I just wanted to talk to everybody in everybody about um, how God is so faithful and as long as we're faithful he's gonna be faithful as long as we keep our faith and don't lose faith in God he's going to be faithful whatever it is that you need God is faithful and he's going to do it. But you have to have bulldog faith. And what do I mean by bulldog faith? A bulldog, when a bulldog clamps onto something, he does not let go. He clamps onto it like a vice grip. He will not let go. You can beat him and he will still keep that lock on whatever it is that he's clamped onto. So let's just say a bulldog clamps onto a stick. I could say a person, but I'm not going to say that because that's gruesome. So uh, a bulldog clamps on to a stick. Okay? He clamps onto that stick and he won't let it go. But then somebody comes along and starts beating him and beating him, trying to make him let go of that stick, but he won't let go because he's clamped on to that stick. He has a bulldog hole on it. So that's what you have to do to the Word of God. You have to clamp on to that word of God and you have to have a bulldog clamp on it and you can't let go. So if whatever's going on in your life, find the word of God that uh, will keep you standing in faith on what it is that you are in need of. If you need a healing, the Bible says that we are healed by his stripes. If you need your needs met, the, God, the Bible says that God will meet your needs. If you need peace of mind, if you're going through things and you have depression or, 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 or anxiety or whatever, the Bible says that God will give you peace and peace beyond your own understanding. Clamp on to that word. You clamp on to that word like a bulldog. But then the enemy is going to come. And he's going to hit you. He's going to try to hit you with some stuff to try to make you let go of your faith. To make you back down or back off of your faith. But even though he does that, you have to keep that clamp on that word. You see, the devil is that person that's hitting that bulldog, trying to make that bulldog let go of what he's clamped on, that stick that he's clamped on to. So it's like you are the bulldog. And you have a clamp on God's word, which is that stick. And the enemy, who is that person who's hitting that dog, that enemy is hitting you. And he's trying to make you let go of that word of God that you're clamped on to. But you can't let him do it. You have to keep your clamp 
on you gotta clamp on to it until he gives up and he walks away and he leaves you alone because he sees that you are faithful to God and that you're gonna hold on to your faith and that you're not gonna let go because victory is yours in the name of Jesus victory is yours in the name of Jesus let me say it again victory is yours in the name of Jesus and no devil in hell and no demon in hell can take it away from you because you belong to the one and only God the one who created the heavens and the earth the one who has power in his hand the one whose son Jesus Christ bled and died giving you authority to speak against any situation that does not line up with the word of God so you my friend you my loves you are walking in victory right now. It might not look like you're walking in victory, but I want to tell you, you are walking in victory. You are a walking testimony right now in the name of Jesus. So I just wanted to give you that encouragement today. And I want to say to you, I know what it's like when you go through because I've been through it. But like I posted the other day, when you're going through the storm, if you don't go through that storm, if you give up, you will not see the rainbow at the end of the storm. So you have to hang on because at the end, through that storm, at the end of that storm, it is a beautiful rainbow and things are going to be bright. So I just want to tell you guys, I love you guys. Bless you. Have an awesome Sunday, rest of the Sunday, and have an awesome blessed week. Bye-bye.